Lesson 10 is all about separating those mixtures we talked about in the last lesson. Separating homogeneous mixtures and separating heterogeneous mixtures. So remember that mixtures are physically combined, so we are going to physically separate them through their physical properties. So melting and boiling points are physical properties. We are going to use solubility, magnetism, density, particle size as well. On the left, you'll notice we have a density separation, which is all about how dense or how heavy those liquids fall. Heavier liquids will fall to the base of a separation column, therefore allowing them to be dispersed first. So think of oil and water. Like oil and water. Um, you also have solubility separation, which means you are going to be what's called distilling. Distillation is very common in the production of some drinkable alcohols. It's also very common in the refining of petroleum. You could also use magnets to remove magnetic particles from a physical mixture. Also, if you were to use a sieve or any type of shifting material, you could basically, with mechanical motion, remove the smaller particles out of a bigger mixture. Think of the top one as like a, a colander. You know, when you have pasta at home, you're separating the pasta from the water. Mm -hmm. Or if you were digging for gold, you would be panning or sieving out the gold particles. Yep. So filtration is something that normally occurs in biology, but it also happens in chemistry. And it's a, a type of mechanical, physical, or biological operation that allows solid particles to be separated from a fluid. We use a medium that only the fluid can pass through. In the kidneys, it would be part of the nephron, where all of that bad stuff, the urea, is squeezed out of your blood. In chemistry, we use a filter, a simple piece of filter paper. When your material is passed through the filter paper and it drips into a beaker, that fluid is called a filtrate. Solutions or homogeneous mixtures can never be filtered. They will always end up as a filtrate. So now we have distillation, uh, which is a technique of heating a liquid to create a vapor, which is collected and cooled to separate it from the original liquid. You can use this on any homogeneous mixture, it's not generally used for any heterogeneous mixture. Distillation, if you guys have ever heard of like hillbillies out in the hills or mountains of uh, Tennessee, what they're doing is they're taking corn mash and using a fermentation process followed by a distillation to make what they call moonshine. Evaporation involves heating a liquid into a vapor for the purpose of separating it from another liquid of higher boiling point or to remove enough water to leave behind a dissolved solid substance. Evaporation also occurs when sunlight strikes an object for a prolonged amount of time, leaving behind just a solid substance. If you go to the beach and you get your shirt or towel wet from the ocean and you leave it out to dry, you may notice that salt crystals form on the fabric. Chromatography is a process of separating out different parts of a chemical mixture onto absorbent material that can then be individually analyzed because different parts are caught on the material at different rates. So what you're doing is you're actually looking for their speed of rising on this paper. And you'll notice in the picture there's many different colors from that one original spot all the way to the left. Um, and those different colors and different spots that you see are just different chemical mixtures that make up that one original homogeneous mixture. If you use a black sharpie in a chromatography as your main source point, you'll actually realize there's about four or five other colors that are in that black sharpie ink. 